In this lesson, we'll learn how to use GSAP with container queries. So here my cards are scaling and blurring, but whenever they change to their horizontal orientation, they start to slide in from the sides like so. And whenever they go back to their default view again, they start to scale and blur. And this point isn't based on screen size. So if we open up a side menu, we'll notice the animation changes depending on if this is open or closed. And if we had these cards in sort of a side panel or something, their animation will always be based on the space available and the user's font size. Normally we could use JavaScript's match media or GSAP match media to run some code when we cross between a certain screen size. For each of these, the screen size has to be based on pixels it can't use rim because JavaScript's just listening for when the window width changes, not for when the user increases their font size. GSAP Match Media clears the previous animation for us, so if we're blurring an element on desktop and we're scaling that element on mobile, it'll clear the desktop blur when we cross into mobile, and when we cross back up into desktop, it'll automatically remove the mobile scale from that element without removing any other inline styles that weren't added by GSAP. Now the way this works is under the hood, it's using gsap.context, which is what we used to have to use manually to clear these timelines and gsap animations. And we used to have to combine that with JavaScript's regular match media, but that gets to be a lot of code, so gsap match media simplifies it and both into one easy to use uh, syntax for combining the two. Now both of these are just based on screen size. If we want to use these with container queries, we could use match container. Now this isn't native to JavaScript yet, so we can use this polyfill for it. And here it's just gonna detect when we switch between a certain container size. It's not actually clearing the previous GSAP animations like GSAP match media would. We'd have to combine this manually with gsap.context. But I've actually simplified this. So here I've just created a CDN link that's based off that match container, but it includes the GSAP context automatically in it. So if you're not using GSAP, you can totally use this like a regular match container. But if you do have GSAP and include it, it will detect that and clear those previous GSAP animations when we cross between the container by using this library. So to see this in action, I'll go ahead and check out this section here. So we have this about section. Inside that we have a container with some padding and a max width, and it has this container type inline size on it. So our container queries will be based on the space available inside this container, minus its padding. So if we open up our embed here, we're saying whenever the space in that container is smaller than 40M, we'll change the headings color to red. And so that should work with font size and with screen size. Whenever we run out of space, it's just gonna go ahead and change that color. Now, if we want to run a GSAP uh, timeline or tween, only when we cross between that certain container size, this is where we can go ahead and use our sort of match container. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this up. We'll notice we can loop through every about section. So if we have multiple of them throughout the page, it works with each of them. And we can find any children we want, like the layout div or the heading. And we want to apply this match container to any child of the container. We could use the layout, we could use the heading element, it doesn't really matter here. And it's saying whenever this child is inside of a container that's smaller than 40M, then if that is true, if that matches, we'll go ahead and animate this heading from an opacity of zero. If we want a separate animation for desktop, we can just go ahead and run that right here. And we might say we'll animate it from an opacity of 0 0.5, or maybe we scale it or we do something else with that heading. Uh, whenever we're on desktop here. So if we want to see this in a bit more context, we can build this out more here. So I'm saying whenever this hero card and is inside a container that's smaller than 40M, then I create this timeline. And this timeline in this case uh, works for both desktop and mobile. If I only wanted it in mobile, I would move it inside this mobile if statement here. But in this case, I'll just keep it out because I, I want the same start and end positions regardless of desktop or mobile. And then I'm just adding a step to this uh, timeline here for mobile, and I'm adding a different step to the timeline for desktop. So that card will have different animations depending on if we're below this container size or not. So if we check this out here, we'll notice that I have these cards here, and they're inside this uh, sort of list element for accessibility, but we could be using a collection list for this as well, either way. We'll select that uh, CMS item, that div that holds the component, 
and give it a container type inline size. So that way our container query can affect any children inside of that container, and that includes the card. This is the element we want to change the style of. So by default, it's actually horizontal. That means the image and the text are side by side here. But whenever we have less space, we're gonna change it to be vertical. So the text stacks under the image. And that's just inside of this sort of uh, embed here. We're saying when the container width, which is the actual item here, this is our container, when the space inside that is smaller than 40M, we'll go ahead and change the uh, card to stack the text under the image. And when that happens, we're matching that 40M here that we have inside our container query to the same 40M that we're using on our animation here, which is right here, so that the JavaScript animation happens at the same point as the CSS animation. And so if we save that and we check that out here, we'll notice that by default, this is just kind of stacked, and that means that these cards are gonna be sort of blurring like so. And if I were to increase my preferred font size here enough, we'll notice that the cards will actually stack under each other and the entire animation will change without us changing our screen size or anything. So it's completely based off container queries, which opens up a lot of flexibility for how we want these animations to work. So I hope this uh, tutorial helps you when linking your GSAP animations to container queries.